Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate you um, guys for, for hanging with me and uh, listening to what um, the Lord is saying through me. It's a really, it's a real privilege. Today's sermon is called His Love Looks Good on You. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I bless you for what you're about to do and what you're about to say and what, how it's going to work in people's lives. God, I pray that you will just permeate the atmosphere like never before. Send this to the highways and byways. Restore and deliver, God. Deliver your word through me with with uh, precision and the fabulousness of you. Hide me behind the cross. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. Today's sermon is called, His Love Looks Good on You. Um, I was watching The Basement with uh, Tim Ross. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Tim Ross is, he is located in, I believe it's Houston, Texas. I don't And he was a pastor, but he um, felt the call for to come out of pod, to come out of pastoring, to podcasting, and now he has this amazing podcast. It's been going on for about three years. It's called the Basement, and let me tell you about this podcast. It is so amazing because people you think you know, you get to have a whole other side of them. It's so vulnerable and so awesome. And these people you think you know, that you get to have other sides of them. He focuses on vulnerability and where people can be. Uh, his, his say, he likes to say all the time, he likes to say, where people are fully known, fully loved, but if not, but if not fully agreed with. And I think, um, just a side note, our society has lost the art of fully loving people, fully knowing people without agreeing with them. You don't need to agree with someone to love them. You just need to embrace who they fully are. Although you may not agree with them, that's okay. But you need to embrace who they are. Whoever they are. And I think we have a hard time embracing just each other as people. That's kind of what I want to talk about today. Anyway, back to the basement. So, I was watching um, The Basement, and I was watching um, his interview last year with Torin Wells. Torin is a singer, and he's a preacher, and he he just um, moved in to... uh, he just felt the call to pastor it 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 was a phenomenal interview um uh any anyway so torin was talking i know i i've known about um torin wells for a while because He's partnered with my beloved church, 
online elevation church uh, many, many times. So I thought I knew at Torn Wells. Um, and I follow him on Instagram and all that. But on the basement, he was talking about how we grew up. And a story that he told, he was telling, stuck with me. Uh, Torn Wells is biracial. His mother is white and his father is black. And uh, his parents had a kind of tumultuous relationship. And uh, where they, they were together, they weren't together, they were together, they weren't together. So this caused the kids to kind of move out, move in, move out, move in. One day he wasn't in their lives and one day he was. So when his father accepted Jesus, one day he came home and said, let's go to church. So they went to an all white church his father is um, a big black man, motorcycle wearing, ponytail, tattoo having man. And so um, this was, I think, somewhere in Texas and um, in the South. So these people um, from this all-white church didn't accept his, his father at first. And instead of getting, getting angry and leaving like we, most of us would do, um, he just stayed there until, until, until they loved him. He just loved them when they didn't love him back. And it was an amazing, incredible story. And um, I was thinking about um, how how we wear all kinds of armor. We, we wear armor of anger, we, we air armors of resentment, we air our, we, we wear all kinds of negative shields and armors and we put up emotional walls so that people can't get close to us and we, um, uh, sometimes we put up walls because we don't want to get hurt. Um, but as I was sitting there and watching this interview, I'm like, oh my gosh, he put on the love of of God to to stay where he wasn't wanted simply because of the color of his skin. And oh my gosh, that was awesome. And then the, this sermon, this sermon was funny how it came about. I got this title pretty soon after I had done the business of love, which is last week. And I got the title on the Sunday or the Monday. He's like, I, the Lord said to me, I want this, this week's sermon to be his love looks good on you. And I'm like, um, what? And I was like, his love looks good on you. What does that mean? And he took me back to something I love doing. Anybody who knows me knows I love to give comps. I love to give compliments on clothes, on hair, on 
like somebody's personality traits and someone's, you know, loves to give compliments on everything. And he says, instead of clothes and hair and, you know, even inner traits, like you're very kind and you do that well and whatever. I I want people to 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 like they wear that beautiful colored thing that you like. I want people to wear love. And I'm like, what does it mean to wear love? When whatever clothes you're wearing For the day, most people wear the same clothes all day. Like, like, um, the ladies, the ladies that, um, do my care, um, I chose this last night. And this morning, they put it on. And I will have my gray top on and my pants and my shoes, everything I'm wearing. I will have my t-shirt on, my shirt on all day. Unless something gets dirty or whatever. But usually people wear their their certain clothes all day, unless they have to change for uh, a certain reason or whatever. But generally, people wear whatever clothes all day. But, so, the Lord said, instead of like your physical clothes that you wear all day, Why don't I want the church to put on love like that? I want them to put on love instead of that that brand name top. He says, you know what the greatest brand name is to put on? It's the name of of Jesus. And along with the name of Jesus, you put on love. You put on patience. You put on kindness. You put on gentleness, temperance, self-control, all the fruits of the Spirit. You put them on like you put your clothes on, and wear them all day, and wear them all day. But the but the difference with physical clothes and these spiritual clothes that I'm talking about uh, is you you never take them off. So put them on and don't take them off. Um. It's it's really a, a awesome way to think about it, cause sometimes um, I used to think until this week, love was a character trait. Like you, you love you whatever is a character trait. Like you give and whatever. He said, no, I want the church in this season to not look at love as a character trait or, or something you show or, or even something you do. It, it spawns out of something you, it, it, the fruits of love makes you do stuff, but love is a cloak you wear. I was gonna call this sermon cloaked in love 
but the Lord said, I want you to call it his love looks good on you. So in, and when you're cloaked in love, like your physical clothes, people can see it on you. They may not say, oh, his love looks good on you or, you know, but they can see it because when you're wearing it, it's spot, it, it, it leaks into your actions, it, it tempers the way you say stuff, it, it, you know, it brings about kindness. And I'm not saying that you'll be perfectly loving all the time. Uh, you probably won't, but w- when you do, it it will become a it'll become a natural part of you. It will become a pr- uh, it will become a practice, something you won't even have to think about. I w- I was I was thinking about. Uh, the election results um, that they're dealing with in the U.S. I'm from I'm from Canada, by the way. A lot of people think I'm from the U.S., but I, I'm actually from Canada. So, um, so I I've heard I have seen a lot of sadness and a lot of uh whatever just because of the results of the react re- election and we know uh what happened in the other election and you know what i began to pray i said father um you can change any heart you can sw- switch any person. Let this be a testimony of your life-changing power. And I believe that you can do it. You could, you could change any life. You could change any heart. Nobody's past your grace and nobody's past your love. And I also prayed some other stuff which were less less forgiving, but after I prayed those other human stuff, I began to pray for this. I'd be like, Lord, let this be a testimony of you. Change a life. Change a heart. Change brain chemistry. Teach where needs to, it need, we need to be taught. And that's not only for the president, that's for every leader, that's for every global leader. And, and I, I began to hear myself praying that, and I thought, oh, I thought it's not me praying that, it's God praying that. Because when you, when you wear love, he begins to pray stuff through you for people that you don't even like that you um that you wouldn't that you wouldn't ever pray for them and it was phenomenal like like i think we just need to put on love put on kindness, put on respect. I I think that we have totally lost lost the um I think we've lost those things. I think we need to put on that armor. And I think along with Ephesians six putting on the whole armor of God, uh, the bless, the breastplate of righteousness, um, having your feet shod with the, having your feet shod with, with peace and 
all of that. Um, I think along with that, I'm sensing that God wants us to wear love, wants us to wear kindness, wants us to wear compassion, wants us to know that despite whatever's going on in the White House, he is still God. He is still God. He's still got a plan. He still got us, and he will never, ever, ever leave us. He took, he, he took my neighbors to the north, to the first president's. No, he took my neighbors to the south, um, through the first presidency, and he will take you guys through this one. He'll never leave you nor, fors- nor forsake you, and this is his world. He's got it under control. And I believe that this is getting set for a move of God, which we haven't seen. I can sense it. God is about to move in a major way. God is about to open doors and shut mouths that need to be shut. He's about to, he's stirring up something in this generation. He's stirring up believers that are the remnant, that are the, that are the, um, that are just praying and fasting believers. I can, I can sense it. He is doing something in this generation. Don't worry. Don't fret. God is up to something with this. God is up to something. Don't worry. Don't fret. Just understand that he is, it's like a big puzzle. He's just getting all the pieces together. And at the end, we'll see the whole picture. You know, when you used to um, do those puzzles as a kid, and you used to have to put all the pieces together before you, you put the picture, and it looked like one thing, but uh, you, you got to look at the box, and it, and it uh, didn't look like the box, but when you put it together, you kind of saw the whole picture. It's like a whole big puzzle, and God is putting together all the pieces, and it may not look like we originally, originally thought or hoped on the box, but God has a plan. And it may not be the plan that we think it is. And this goes on on a global le- level, on a on an individual level, country by country. God is orchestrating everything. He has a specific agenda for the world and it's way past any political agenda any political person in the white house anything he has pieces puzzle pieces that he's working out and shifting together in our lives as people in our lives as nations in our lives as just individuals and our lives as Christians, the the future for the church, I believe, is very bright. Is very bright, and um, we we just need to um, uh, we just need to know that God is God, and He hasn't left us, and um, I would suggest that every leader, every pastor, every um, every YouTuber start praying 
and asking God, Lord, what is my place in your agenda for this world? What is my church's place in your agenda for this world? What is my place on YouTube? What am I supposed to bring? You know, a lot of people, especially outside of the traditional church um, context, just just spout off about other people and criticize other people to get views. This is, if you are a YouTuber, this is a platform that you can use to reach the world. Why would you waste time talking about preachers you don't even know or people you don't even know or something you've heard just to get known or just to get the algorithm to get people to view your content. YouTube, if done right, is a powerful medium. Use it well. Use it well. Use it for the kingdom. Don't use it to tear down other people that you don't know. Use it to build up the body. We as YouTubers should be using it to build up the body, should be using it to get souls into the kingdom, should be using it to proclaim the gospel, not to bring down down, um, other pastors or other people or celebrities or whatever. No, 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 no. It's not our job to do it. Let God deal with that. Our job as you as Christian YouTubers for our site is to um, bring in soul is to be used as tools to bring in more people to the kingdom. So I think that's what every channel should be about. It should be about bringing in more souls to the kingdom. Who cares what Michael Todd is doing? Who cares what um, Carl Lenz is doing? They're doing their own thing. We have to focus on the gospel. There are too many people hurting, too many people dying, too many people struggling with illness for us to waste time with this crap. Too many people... I'm dealing with wars in other countries, too many people starving, too many people in financial distress, too many people struggling with mental illness for us to waste time with this nonsense. Don't don't use this wonderful platform to spread nonsense. Use it to spread life and love in whatever way you do in whatever way you do. And when you do that, people will flock to you. And the Lord will be so proud of you. And because you're doing God's work, I just wonder what Paul would do with with something like YouTube. Or something like Facebook, or something like Instagram, or something like WhatsApp. Like, wow, it's just such a awesome, awesome privilege and awesome uh, place. And the only reason why it's not an awesome place, I'll tell you one thing about social media. Social media is not bad or good. It's a tool. And the people that use it for bad, it's because they have nefarious intentions. But really, 
it's meant to be used for his glory. And and I often say that what pastors need to be asking, I've always thought about this, is how do we use this tool? Is this tool just to put on serv just to put up sermons and stream my services on a Sunday or Wednesday or Tuesday? Or what else can we be doing with this tool? Or what other websites should we be starting? What other things should we be doing? I think those are the kind of questions that we should be asking. It's it's like a hammer. I always say it's like a hammer. You can use a hammer to build houses for people around the world, like Habitat for Humanity does, or you can use a hammer to bludgeon somebody to death. You can use your words. Your words are tools, too. You can use your words to bring life, to bring encouragement, to bring strength, to bring hope. Or you can use your words words to tear down, malign, uh, you know, do all these bad things. Um... Uh, disgrace different people. Um, People need to hear the gospel. And besides the church, I think social media is a wonderful way to do that. We, We just need to be asking the Lord how to use it effectively. I believe that there are um parts in which we are not utilizing social media. I believe that there are ways in which we are not utilizing social media, and that would depend on your church, your reach, whatever whatever resources you have. And I think that's what every pastor, big or small churches, should be asking. How do we use this tool? Instead of saying, everybody get off social media, it's bad. Look at it as a tool and ask the Lord, Lord, how do we use this tool? What kind of website should we be building? What, what, um, what um, tool should our website have? Uh, what's our strategy dealing with the internet? It's a tool. And we, like any tool, we need to learn to deal with it responsibly. And uh, we need to learn to teach it responsibly, deal with it responsibly. And um, it can be a blessing to so many people. I didn't mean to go there. This is not a social media. This was not supposed to be a social media sermon, but God wanted to say something there. Too many people need the gospel for us to waste this blessed tool of maligning other Christians or putting them down or putting their ministries down. We need to get, we need to use this tool to, to spread his message for the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to wear love. And, and when we wear love, it comes into our actions. Because when I put on my clothes, all people see is, well, today they would see gray and pink because my sweater is gray and my shirt is pink. So when, when a person puts on love, 
all people will see is love. And love, ex- the clothing of love will extend to your actions. And it will change your character. Because what we don't understand about love, it transforms, it changes. We often, we often think um, judgment and being harsh changes people. No, love does. Love is not weak and, oh, whatever. Love is very strong. Love is very strong. Love has the ability, God's love has the ability to transform lives, to restore hearts, and to refresh a soul. Love is the ultimate water for a thirsty soul. And that's what we need to be offering to people through social media as well. And we, we, we need for them to, to comment instead of just that red shirt looks good on you. Oh, I'd love it if people, people would say to other people, oh, his, God's love looks good on you. Or his love looks good on you. Oh, you wear joy like a, like a sweater. It's awesome, man. Oh, it would be awesome if people started to comment on that. Or what if pe- what people said to me over the years was, I don't know what it is about you, but it's, it's something peaceful, something joyful. And I say thank you. Because you know why? I try as best as I can to wear peace, to wear joy, to wear love. And if people see it on me, I've done my job, but I'm so grateful. I'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Bye. I dare you to try that with someone who who is exhibiting love. Turn to them and say, you know what? God's love's looking good on you. God's love's looking good on you. And they can say, you too! Wow! We'll talk next week. Guys, bye.